We're here. Oh my gosh. Hey everyone, welcome to Canlas Community College. I'm Brian Canlas, and this is my esteemed associate professor, Jody It's an Hall. honor to be here, Brian. I Thank you. I just got through the fencing class through Canlas. Little, uh, little, little. I don't. Warm, we, don't we we did pickle. We had our pickleball. Oh, pickleball. Um, uh, maybe I signed up. This maybe weekend. I signed up for a different course. Never mind. Maybe. Have you already maybe it was been? Like a, what are your sister school? Full disclosure: <laughs> neither of us have eaten any weed today. True. And so, True uh, or have been <laughs> drinking. So, uh, we're just happy. I'm so glad you're here, Jody. I've known you for a dozen years. I think so. Is that true? Actually, yeah. And we've had some incredible. We've traveled um, around the world together. <laughs> we were in a, a business group together. We were. We both grown our companies. You've grown yours. A lot bigger than I've grown mine. I don't know about that, Brian. <laughs> but uh, you are a legend in this city. Um, you are the founder and CEO. Is that true? Yes. Right. That's right. That's correct. Of Cupcake Royale. That is correct. Yes. And you also <laughs> well, first tell us about Cupcake Royale. What's the story there? What's the story now? Well, Back I mean, like, how day? did you start it? When yeah. did you start it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I live in Seattle and I grew up here and went to college here and ended up getting a job out of college for this little coffee company called Starbucks and they had 30 stores and I just right time amazing role I spent 10 years there building kind of this Starbucks experience as an early hire in marketing I think I opened 25 markets we had four when I started we had 30 stores when I started Um, and so was really a part of kind of building this coffee house experience in the United States and under Howard Schultz and what a, an incredible time. Anyway, so I spent a good deal of time there. And when did you leave Starbucks? I left in 2001. And did you know what you wanted to do? You know, I really saw these local coffee houses popping up and uh, Vivace, Victrola, yeah. uh, Top Hot Donut, etc. And I was really in love. I learned a lot about coffee culture gathering penny university kind of this this culture and tradition that's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old and really love that kind of community idea of what i learned doing at starbucks and wanted to bring it back to community to neighborhood right. and had this crazy idea to add cupcakes to the mix and who would have thought like my friend kim malik who salt and straw buddy we both grew up at starbucks together she was like you're crazy what are you doing were really, you the we, first like cupcake shop we in were Seattle? we were outside of magnolia bakery we were the first in the country no way so, yeah it's crazy what? so i was crazy and who would have thought and then martha Wait, you, stewart you started the national cupcake craze i'm pretty sure i did I'll give all you by cream. myself <laughs> yeah no i think martha stewart put it on her wedding book right after we launched uh we Sha Ching Chow, hello, I hope you're out there, um, wrote an amazing article right after we opened and we went from 100 cupcakes a day to 1,000 and it was just crazy from there. About four or five years later, Trophy Cupcake opened and you saw more competitors, which yeah. is great. We were like, let's have a truce and not beat all, each other up and have cupcake wars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's been wild. So it's been over, it's almost 17 years that we are have been around. So. And, and you we, guys are huge in our community, as activists in our community, as supporters absolutely. of neighborhoods. Right. As, I'm wearing I've, my uh, my vote sticker. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like we've used our superpowers for good. We got involved in things like affordable health care for all. I ended up doing work in Olympia and legislation and uh, and. Um, testifying and got involved in our and when Obama was elected to go to the White House meet with his new team Wait, you met Obama? I met Obama. I didn't know that. Like a couple times. Uh, you're just like buds with Obama. He tweeted me. It's crazy. Like I mean it's crazy. Like <laughs> the leader of the free world and I'm making cupcakes. And anyway, so I did get to meet Obama uh, in when Yeah, in, what did he tweet? Uh, so basically, one of the things I did early on was get involved in healthcare, and that was the first thing okay. he was working on. So I went and met with Nancy Ann DeParl before Karen Sebelius was voted in as Health and Human uh, Cabinet member, member, and then Lawrence Summer was there, and they went straight to me. It's all on C-SPAN. You guys can Google it if you want. Um, it's all on White House Record. So Jody Hall, small business owner, tell me about healthcare and healthcare costs are going up wow. 30, 40 yeah. percent a year. Oh, I know. And I'm like, I'm a small business. We're the engine of the economy. Yeah. Why do we have to pay twice as much for half the coverage coming from Starbucks? Loving Howard's vision of take care of your people. Right. 
Number one, right? We're, we're, we both share that. Yeah. You take care of your people. It's yeah. the most important thing we have. And so uh, got involved, ended up going to testify in a Supreme Court congressional hearing. Or, or a congressional hearing, not Supreme Court. Republican okay. congressional hearing. Like in Congress. The only woman in Congress. He sat there in the thing. The only woman, the, the, the only House. Democrat, the only small business owner. And sat there, got grilled by both sides of Congress. I got to call some people off on wrong statements. And then after that, Barack Obama tweeted, said, Jody Hall, small business owners standing up for for the right for small business to have access to affordable health care for all. So it was pretty cool. That's like, who would, who would think running a cupcake business? You grew Cupcake Row into this really cool, amazing business in the city. Right, and yeah. Then, and I mean, then what happened? When did Good Ship come around? So I was invited by a lot of uh, friends to say, hey, this uh, cannabis thing is going to be legal. We just voted for it. Um, you what, should, year, what year was that? That was 2012 yep. that Washington State voted for it. Okay. And I just had a bunch of people that I got to know uh, in, by being a business owner and a leader in our community were just like, we'll invest in you. You're good at brands. You're good at community. This is, you're, you know how to build trust. So I thought they were crazy. And then I, last minute, literally the last day at 3 o'clock, the window closes at 5. I call my bookkeeper. I'm like, all right, will you just create this company and file this application? Uh, let's call it Royale Leisure Industries, Jody Hall, and we own our space on Capitol Hill, 1111 East Pike Street. And I don't think a thing of it, nothing, 250 bucks, set up a company, whatever, it's gone. It's like in three or four months later, I get a call from the Seattle Times, The Stranger, the Capitol Hill blog, they're like, Jody Hall, Royale Leisure Industries, 1111 East Pike, are you going to create pot <laughs> Tell us more. And it like trended on Twitter, and it every newscaster was outside of every single cupcake location. Tune in tonight. Is the cupcake queen going to sell pot cupcakes? Will Jody Hall <laughs> make edibles? It was insane. It was <laughs> insane. But the crazy thing about that was, is everybody came out of the closet to me. They were, I was Oprah. They were like, make it reliably dose, make it low dose, make it, safe. Make it delicious. Make Don't it, yeah. make it like a sawdust cookie. Can you make it taste? And I was like, oh my gosh, everybody, everybody has a relationship with And Canada. you launched the good ship. And so I launched the good ship. We raised some money. We built it into one of the top selling brands, beloved brands, created experiences around. My idea with good ship was I really believe that versus alcohol, which is our nation's way to imbibe it is safer it's better for our bodies and i think it allows us to profoundly connect with just a micro dose like a right. glass of wine and that's what we're going to do today we're right. going to teach you how to how to uh dose your cannabis so you're not playing edible roulette which is a horrible thing which brian i don't know if you have any experiences with that Probably not. Of course not. Not that you know of. Actually, <laughs> maybe you do. <laughs> we did have a, a crazy day in Mexico one day where you were my like sh shaman and guided me away from a dark place. Me of all people, like <laughs> I'm, I'm like the no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Edible roulette is a real thing. Like one mm -hmm. of the things that I think turn people off from edibles or like if someone brings brownies over to your house. Right. It's, yeah. You have no idea. Is there is there ten shots of booze in that yeah. brownie or one? Yeah. And is that a margarita um, or is that, like that a fifth of tequila? That's not fun. That's <laughs> yeah. not safe. No. That's. Uh, it won't kill you, which is a good thing. So you, right. nobody dies from overdosing. It doesn't debilitate your neurological but, system like alcohol or even yeah. coffee or water. You know, like you can die from those things in a different way than cannabis. And one of the things that you're passionate about is figuring out how to responsibly enjoy the effects of cannabis. Right, in a microdose level, because I think most of us uh, appreciate that. Unless we're regular imbibers this way, and that's great too. Uh, yeah. And we, it's not like alcohol where you have a glass of wine, two, three, four, and you understand what that does to you. Right. Cannabis, you can, you can have some people that will have, we're gonna make five milligram cookies today. Yeah. That is half of the state serving size. The state serving size is 10 milligrams. I think that's way too much. For me, that's two bottles of wine. I oh do gosh. not want that in that's one so one edible. And I'm a lightweight. I'm an yeah. occasional user. Um, so 2.5 to me is a glass of wine. I know that doesn't equate. Does but some people can have 50 milligrams of cannabis, right. and it feels like a glass of wine. 
It's it. it dep- your tolerance will. So it's super important when making edibles to understand exactly what the dose mm-hmm. is, so that you can control responsibly what yeah, you're putting in your body. Exactly. And tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to combine two of your great skills, which is baking, because <laughs> you are the original master baker yes, that... of this city, and, and cupcakes <laughs> and delicious treats, and also how to infuse it. Right. With cannabis in a responsible way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I think the fun thing about what we're going to do today, I mean, we're, we're going to talk about different ways that you can uh, infuse cannabis. Uh, and you can do it into other things. Butter okay. is really the best yeah, way to do it, in my opinion. You infusing butter. You, you can go to the store, and if you got the shopping list, um, you can just buy um, oil. Yeah. I don't know where to put that. Um, so that is just... So the way oil tinctures work, so what you'd want to do if you're buying it at the store is you need to have it uh, ready to uh, be infused into food. And what that means is that you need to activate the THC. You need to decarboxylate it. If, and if, if a you tincture, buy weed. Uh, uh, yeah, so if you or buy oil, oil or, or cannabis, we're going to decarboxylate the cannabis today. Because if I were to just take some weed, which I have right here, yes, and just eat it. You're not going to get high. Nothing would happen. Yeah. I have to smoke it. You have to smoke it, exactly. Right, so eating this, no effect. No effect. Okay. Um, yeah, so it, it needs to be activated by heating it. And when I'm baking with cannabis, I either have to activate it by decarbing it, which right. we're going to do. Right, Or I have to buy an already decarbed tincture. Right. So and tinctures come decarboxylated, and that's a convenient thing. And in Washington State, you can only sell edibles in one package to 100 milligrams. So that is already pre-dosed at 100 milligrams. So that is the easy way to cook with cannabis. It's the easiest, yeah. like, simplest way. So you don't way. have to do all this decarbing butter. But it's the most it's, expensive way. It's very expensive. And, and it's not as delicious. It's not as fun. It doesn't <laughs> make the cookies or brownies taste as good. It doesn't make your house smell as good. As butter. <laughs> exactly. So you like, for your own baking at home, you like to decarb your own cannabis. Yes. And then infuse it into butter. Yep. And so if you're watching That's at home, weird. You could have either done this in advance. Mm-hmm. It takes a very long time. We're going to show you the steps. Yep. But uh, following along doesn't quite work because uh, you can follow along with the cookies, but not these steps because there's going to be lots of time in between. Right. Absolutely. Right. So we'll show you the steps, right. but it'll take time to bake, okay. time to infuse. So I go to my local pot shop. Do you have a favorite right. in Seattle? You know, I, I like a lot of the local pot shops. I really love... Uh, Reef. I love Uncle Ike's. The Reef is uh, Tom Kundig's group built that on Capitol Hill. Oh, so it's like very beautiful. It's amazing. It's really pretty. The Reef. The Reef. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I like Uncle Ike's. Um, they're nearby me on Capitol Hill, so that's convenient. You go and you buy weed. Do you buy yep. any weed? What do you ask the person? I'm mostly when you when you take cannabis, whether it's sativa, indica, all these kinds of things, terpenes. Um, when we decarboxylate, we're gonna we might be able to preserve some of those terpenes uh, with this. When you make an oil or distillate, you're really losing those terpenes. You although lose a they, lot of the they can reintroduce them, so they are. So, you, okay. so does it make you sleepy? Does it make you energized? Um, generally, with when you when you do the butter, you're getting THC. You're you not would, you're not necessarily. It's like saying, "I'm going to drink Chablis and read a book." And you're like by yeah. the fire. Oh, I'm going to drink tequila and party all night. I uh, some of it I really believe. The science doesn't really say that one does. It's how your right. mood is around that set and setting. In kind this of case, idea. you for you tonight, you yes. chose Alaskan Thunder F, is what it says. <laughs> yes. Is that F short? It's F blank blank blank. Got it. It's one of those. I mean, isn't it's that It's a strong awful? word that maybe is too strong. And how for much Candles how much college? THC is in that? So um, this one that you bought, and this is really important. You're telling me yeah. earlier. Right. When you buy bud, like yes. this is fl- just dried so the great, marijuana So the great thing yeah. about legal cannabis is that everything you buy in the store has to be tested. So you know exactly what's in it. You know how much CBD is in it, which is another cannabinoid, THC, THCA. There's other compounds, CBN, CBG. Like there's hundreds of cannabinoids. And every package will have all that information. It'll have the major cannabinoids. And okay. mostly people who are growing flour to smoke want to get as high of THC. As possible. You're seeing more and more CBD brands. So if you smoke things that are very high in CBD, you don't get stoned, but you do get a sense of calm yeah. and focus, which is nice. Yeah. It's kind of cool. but In this case... Uh, in this case, we got... Our THC is... It says THC 0.7. Okay. And then it says THCA 22.2. 
All right, so you guys write this down. We're going to do a math equation. So yeah. write THCA and look at your package, or if you want to just follow along yeah. with us, um, it should say how much is in there. Ours says 22.2% is yeah. THCA. And then THC equals 0.7%. 0.7. So that yeah. means <clears throat> of that gram or of that package, whatever the weight is, it doesn't this matter. Is the potency of the it. The percentage the, of it is that. The so only numbers we care about, there's a lot of numbers those here, two. is THC and THCA. And that's because we're measuring the psychoactive ingredient, ingredient not what gets you high, so to speak. Yeah, because yes. that's the thing that can get us in trouble. Yes. Okay. So then we have to do math. So do this before you enjoy your cannabis. So you take it, it, and, and you want to stress. Yeah. This math is really important. <laughs> yeah. And it's on if the you, class If notes. you want to it's know. It's on the recipe we sent out. If you want to know how much you're putting into each cookie so you're not playing edible roulette, it's kind of nice. You, yeah. you know that you, you, you don't want to have a bottle of tequila. You want to have a margarita. We're, yes. we're making a margarita yeah. with today. So. Um, okay. So, so. You, you find these two numbers, yep. you write them down, what's the next step? So then THCA is a, an ingredient that uh, when you heat will convert to THC. Okay. So we want to take the amount of THCA and multiply it by 0. 0. 0.88. Okay, every time, that's like every a known that's number. Just, that's just when a known number. When we put this in the oven, it's mm -hmm. going to decrease by, it's going to be 88% the, of what it was. Right. And the THC amount is going to be about 88%, 88%. Of, of that. So multiply by so, 88%. Yep. And that comes to 19.5. In this case, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So then we then the THC is already, that is what would get you high, but it's so little that you wouldn't feel it if you ate that plant material. Okay. Um, so we're going to add that 0.7 to 19.5, and that means... So you don't multiply the THC number by any factor. No. You just do 0 0.88 times THCA. Because that is already activated. THCA. The THCA is what will, with heat, will activate you it. Add it to the THC, yep. and that gives us for 20. what? 20.2. 20.2, which means post-cooking, 20.2% is the potency yeah. of our marijuana. Yep. Yeah. And so then what we're going to do from there is just take 20.2 times 1,000 milligrams. Okay. Divided by 100. Of course, so, you know, I'm just doing this. this and is that, just, this is just the way to do it. That equals 202 milligrams of THC that we are going to pull out per gram. So if we're doing one gram of cannabis, we have 202 milligrams of THC. Right. We can put that into a quarter stick of butter, a pound of butter, you know, whatever. Right. And if you do a full ounce, that's 28 times that into a pound of butter. Yeah two pounds of butter, et cetera. And so, so basically every gram that we infuse, which today we did seven. Seven grams. So the, the butter that you have right here, and I put a note on it. Uh, so what we do from there. Yeah, we'll get there. Right, uh, the, what we do from there is we multiply it times how many grams we infuse, so seven. Right. Uh, and then we take, then there's a certain amount of milligrams. It's, uh, it's about 14, Hundred and fourteen, fifteen yeah, milligrams I, of THC. Yes, I think. Well, I think the math because everyone's packet is different. Yeah. I think the, the bottom line. But is my you, my point is is that we're gonna add that up the grams times the milligrams. Yes. And we got we get let's just say fourteen hundred in this case. The, there's we're infusing a pound of butter. A pound yes. of butter is thirty two tablespoons. So I'm just gonna divide that by thirty two, and I get about forty milligrams of yeah. THC so per tablespoon. The goal in this entire yeah. thing is to find out how much THC is in your pound of butter. Right. That way you know every tablespoon of butter has exactly how much THC mm -hmm. in it. Yes, exactly. So um, that is, that's the goal. You add up those two mm -hmm. numbers. Right. And then you multiply it by the number of grams that you bought. Right. And then you figure out, am I going to do a pound of butter? Am I going to do a half pound of butter? Right. And then you divide those things. Yeah. You've got to do your math yep. really smartly here. If you don't carry the one. Okay, so, so quick question. So somebody's yeah. saying, like, what if my, what I've bought actually has a total THC number already on it? Is that, is that have they already done the math for you? So um, does that so make like sense? So like in flour? Well, let's see. I just said my package doesn't say the THCA percent. As one person's asking, another person says, "What if it already has the total THC on yeah. it?" I, the... Generally, I would just take that number of THC and just reduce it by, uh, by you know, 88%. an eighth. An eighth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think as a general rule, yeah. take that number. It's going to go down once you put it in the oven. Yeah, exactly. Err on the side of being conservative. Mm -hmm. You can always eat more cookies. Right. Exactly. Right. 
and, you, then, and you want people to have a good time, and it does take between 30 minutes, yeah. 90 minutes, to an hour, two hours. So um, it, everybody's different. It's how hydrated are you? What did you eat? Yeah. What what time of day is it? What's your mood like? Are you resistant to this? Are you excited about this? Yeah. All these things, mental, physiological. So I only have about a gram here because yeah. we took most of it and we already did it so you can see the yep. after effect. So what, what we want to do here, to, we're going to decarboxylate. So what we're doing, you can either do this with your fingers and break apart the yeah, flour material. You can either material. take it and just break it. And also you can use trim. Trim is uh, the stuff that's not the flour. It's called popcorn, like the little buds, um, leaves. The, the, the stems are okay. Because the, we're, we're infusing it. The yeah, seeds everything. are okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... You break so you that can apart, break it up, or you can take a knife. And you want and it like, to be about the size of a grain of rice, pretty consistent, because we're going to bake it, and we want it all to kind of cook at the same the, rate, right? The, the goal is to get it, the pieces, now it's not, it, I've tried this twice, and every time there's like powder and yeah. bigger pieces, but. So you don't want to use a, a cannabis grinder, because that would make it too fine, it's really easy to burn it, and we don't want to burn it. Great. The goal is to heat it to the right temperature for the right amount of time. Pieces of rice. Yeah, exactly, you know, generally. And okay. then we're gonna put that on a cookie sheet lined with tin foil. And we wanna line it with tin foil because the, the metal of the pan right conducts heat. <laughs> I just need a half baking tray. Just a half Hold baking on, I know tray. Where one is. <laughs> you you wanna put it on tin foil so the the pan it kind of helps to keep a temperature that's consistent, otherwise the cannabis touching that hot pan can can uh, misbehave for us. We're gonna okay. put some tin foil down. Just tin foil down. <laughs> Very serious here. Uh, and you I just guess... wanna kind of put that down and make a nice, easy layer. Right there are nice Try pieces. not to have it stacked so on just, each other. Just like. Just awesome, look at that. Is that that's a good move? beautiful. And then I, no. uh, and then wanna... I keep it. Yeah, that's perfect. Kind of spread just it out. Just kind of spread out. I, and if there's any more big pieces, I don't, I don't want the big ones. And what I like to do is put a little piece of tinfoil over that. You want to put it in the center of your oven. Every oven's different, especially home ovens. Um, you could get a thermometer. You, we're basically going to bake this at about 250 degrees for 30 minutes. We could also bake it at 200 degrees for an hour. I mean, there's a, there's, you know, you really don't want to get too much hotter than that because you don't want to burn the cannabis. I cover both so sides cover of tinfoil. Mm -hmm. And again... We're doing 250 degrees Yeah, so important. So important that you know, um, I'd already weighed mine out, but you know exactly how many grams mm -hmm. you just put in, and you know the so potency. So yes. So awesome. I, I go put this in the oven. Right, and also, if you do have a convection oven, turn off the convection, because it will blow your cannabis all over the oven. and. It's not fun. We just did that actually earlier. Uh, so we learned that the hard way. We filled one of Chef Brady's ovens with just cannabis everywhere because <laughs> the, the fan was still it on. It was kind of like that dollar thing inside yeah, the There's a special grabbing. smell in this yeah. kitchen right now. <laughs> right. So then, then when, when it comes out of the oven. Yeah. So there, there we go. It looks the exact same. It, it might Maybe turn a little, a little brown, a little, it'll, it'll kind of get a... Okay. You don't want it to be super brown, but it, it, it well, it's dried out now. Okay, so, Jody, so some people using scissors, some people using a mortar and pestle, like different. So we have we're gonna have different sizes going into the oven. So you would just say, hey, grain of rice. I, I grain, generally grain rice like to cut goal. it um, just because I can get more consistency. But some if they, people if might they've gone cook. smaller. They should cook it for less time, just uh, till it's like slightly. Golden. I think put definitely put a, a sheet of tin foil over it, okay. and you you need to cook it a long enough to decarboxylate it. So our recipe today is 250 degrees okay. for 30 minutes. Okay. You could also do 200 degrees for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and there, there, you can Google the internet to it's, see. It's, it's not rocket science. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just gotta bake it. And so what Brian and I did is we're gonna do this in a crock pot. Okay, so let's, 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 talk, let's about talk about that. Beforehand, because we already wanted to melt it, we melted a pound of butter. Right. On low. Right. And what, what degree do I want to keep my butter at? You want to keep the butter between about below 200 and 200 degrees. Because if it above gets above 175, than that, it starts to taste bad. It, you're just, you start to kind of burn your butter and you, you don't, I, I think you just get a worse taste, but uh, 
I don't think you're going to damage your ability to extract. Okay. Uh, butter doesn't burn until uh, 350 degrees. So oh. a crop box is kind of nice for that. Right now, this is at this is at about 189, which is perfect, and it's low. And it's at low. Yeah. So I'm going to take my <clears throat> my decarb cannabis. Yes, and we're going to put it in there. And I'm going to just jump, just dump it in. Dump it in. Just okay. go for it. And then it's going to make your house smell really good. <laughs> okay. So here's a fun <laughs> fact um, that I learned. Yes. Fun fact. And if it does get too hot, you can turn your crock pot off for a little bit of time. It's still steeping at a hot rate. I mean, crock pots are all, you know, they're right. not like uh, fancy appliances. Ours uh, has owls. Yes, I really, I really like it. This so looks like 19. What's, what's so 72? great about <laughs> making your own pot butter Yes. is that it's more delicious than adding a tincture and it's way cheaper. And we were doing the math earlier. It's like, 90% cheaper. Right. Uh, that's why this right. work is worth it. Because if you buy this, it's a lot of money. That's versus... about 25 bucks. And then I bought seven grams of cannabis. For, for 25 about... bucks? Yeah. So I didn't buy the best of the best. I, I'm you getting THC. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and so, but the amount of... The, the... So we're going to get about 10 times more THC. We're going to get 10 times more. Actually, more than that. We're getting 1,400 milligrams of THC, and that's 100. So yeah, 14, you know, 14 times, times more, more yeah. for the same price. For a similar price, yeah. And um, that butter can live in your fridge for a long time. Yeah, you can freeze it, um, and it's great. Like, sometimes you just might put a little butter on a cracker after a hard day instead of a glass of wine. And, and I would do it with a tablespoon or a teaspoon so right. I know how much THC is in right. it. Right, so there's three teaspoons in a tablespoon. So if this is 40, then it's about 13 milligrams per teaspoon. Right. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. So, so maybe that's a half a, a teaspoon? Yeah, I would. I mean, it depends. Yeah. And you'll, you, you should learn your tolerance slowly. Always yeah. start with like two, two to five milligrams and then wait 90 minutes and know where you are and then okay. add more. It can take like. a full 60 to 90 minutes for You can always go I, forward, you can never go backwards. You can never go backwards. Which some people I know that. I learned that, that in story. Mexico. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, if you put the lid on, <laughs> yes. is that important? I think I'm trying to keep the temp to, this is a little, this is running a little hot, so I'm gonna take this off because I don't want it to boil. Got it, so you're, you're doing lid off yeah. on purpose. And then what is the and process? And I have a little thermometer here so I can check. This is gonna sit here for three hours. I would check it about every 30 minutes. Just to make sure it's not too not hot. Not boiling. Do you stir yeah. it? You could stir it. Yeah. But generally you're just... Yeah. I stir it every 30 minutes. Hanging out. Yeah. Making a sweet aroma. It takes a while. It takes a long time. Yeah. And it, honestly, if you did not want to do the oven portion of this, you could do this for eight hours overnight. Is it better that way? Uh, it just takes a long time to decarb uh, from, from oh, fresh cannabis. Oh, I see. Cannabis. You're saying I could put fresh cannabis in mm -hmm. and leave it on a lot longer. Right. Okay. And there is another trick which I didn't want to bring this up, but you could add a cup of water to this. And what that does is keep the temperature at about 212 degrees or less, because it, it will boil off. Uh. And then when you're done, obviously you want to put that in the fridge, water and uh, butter well, separate. Let's, and let's that's do that. A, that's a different way to let's do it. Let's pretend it's three hours later. Okay. Okay. Yes. And so what I would do. Now we're going to strain it. I would take my bowl and my strainer. Mm-hmm. And uh, here, I'm gonna have you come over here. I'm gonna throw my mask on real quick. <clears throat> Unplug this guy. We're done with you. Beautiful owls. That is a cool crock pot. And, so, uh, and so what you do is you just get a little, like one of these guys, right? And a, yeah, a, a really tight mesh strainer, or if it's not, put a layer of cheesecloth in. That's super simple. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna just run the butter through that. You use a spatula to get it all out. And that filtered it pretty well. I don't see any kind of flour. Got it. And then leftover, and and is this just garbage? This is pretty much all the THC, if we had let it sit for three or more hours, would be in there. So this is pretty much garbage. This is you pretty much garbage. Compost that, Com feed it to the pigs, whatever you got. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay. And then. An and then we're going to just let that chill in the fridge for a while. So you want to make your can of butter, you know, a couple hours before you're going to bake. You don't want to use hot butter while you're yeah. baking. So in, in this case, this is the one that you made before right. the show. Exactly. And you were talking to me about labeling. Yeah. 
I think it's really important uh, to label, especially if you have kids, babysitters, grandparents, people rifle through looking for snacks late at night. Have you ever been a babysitter looking for those pop tarts? Yes, but I generally don't go to eat raw butter. Right, but sometimes they're cookies <laughs> or whatever. go for the pot butter. <laughs> exactly. Also, but I thought the label is probably good. Yeah, but good we point. don't want grandma like. We don't. Uh, and, and, and it might be just cookies right. too. Like when we're finished, we're going to have a lot of cookies. Right. And there's two ways to yeah. deal with yeah. that. Yeah. One Put is. Put those in a Tupperware and label the crap. Right. Out. Yeah. You don't want your Do you kids. Know, uh, you don't want. True story. Once this guest. <laughs> true story. Came to dinner. Yes. And it's, it's, it's fairly common when guests come that they bring us a gift. Especially if they're in the industry, like they're from uh-huh. the restaurant, they'll bring beer or they'll bring gummy bears or yeah. snacks, so that after work we get to have a, you know, a snack as a team. Yeah, it's a fun thing fun. to bring a yeah. gift. Well, this one guest brought uh, a dozen brownies, no label, just oh, brownies, no. and we put and them in the, in the we put kitchen? them in the wine station because uh-huh. it's kind of where we bring stuff back to. I think he gave them to Nelson. And and Nelson Nelson got the munchies uh, or just just hungry and pounded a brownie or two in the middle of service. <laughs> oh my god. And about an hour later he comes up to me and Mark oh, and he was like, so guys, I think I've done something <laughs> bad. He's like and I think I have to go home. I think I have to go yeah. home. And he tapped in the middle of like a busy But he already offered him to the rest of the staff. And yeah. that's the thing. It's, it's oh, like no. a, it like a single handed That like, is staff irresponsible taking, behavior. It, it yeah, but no one but no one knew. Yeah, no one had So any, Nelson got Nelson super stoned quickly, in the middle yeah. service. Oh, he that's had to go home. Because uh, there was no label. <laughs> so please, label your treats. Right, label, exactly. Label your tips. Label, label. Okay, so you label this one, and the most important label, again, this one is 40 milligrams of THC per tablespoon. Yeah, and that's just going through that math equation of how much yeah. THC is in a gram. That math is in and your how notes. And mu- how many, uh, how much butter? Yeah. We know a stick of butter is a half a cup. Yeah. And there's... Uh, four of those in a pound of butter. So yeah. there's six, you know, there's, yeah. Okay. No, there's eight of those in a pound of butter, but yeah. We have no, decarbed four. our cannabis. I, I don't know. I'm just a baker. I'm trying to figure out how much butter is in a pound. Is it four? Four oh, sticks, oh, which That's each sticks four, a half a cup. Four sticks, right? Yeah. Each sticks a half a cup? Yeah. Is that right? I don't know. I, it's eight ounces, eight yeah. Eight ounces? Is it eight ounces per stick? Eight tablespoons. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, That's exactly. What, There's 32 tablespoons. That's what your calculator's for. Sorry about this. And Google. <laughs> it's hard. It, pot is hard. Yeah. And Google. <laughs> Until it's not. Until it's not. Until so it's let's, just so let's great. do this. Okay, let's make cookies. All right. So, so uh, the first thing we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is you guys have the recipe. Let's set. We have our butter. We um, set that here. So what we did is our recipe calls for... We're, we're doing this in grams. I really recommend that if you're baking at home, grams are a lot more accurate. Baking, baking's a science. It's not throw a pinch in here of that like Brady does uh, over here at the chef station. When you're baking, like it's we, chemistry. We need to be accurate. Yeah, so I recommend. So this is 283 grams of butter total that the recipe calls for. We are baking cookies. We're baking 34 cookies. Yeah. Uh, we have this all weighed out. Yeah, 34 so cookies, and we want each cookie to have how five much? Grams. Five milligrams. Because five milligrams is, is a half is a, of serving a for good. S- yeah. It's like one beer. It's like a couple Maybe beers. Maybe a couple beers. Yeah. But it's not a fifth. It's not it's, a two It's bottles not going to knock you on your butt. For most people. Yeah. And so it's yes. nice to make a cookie that I can eat a whole it's a, cookie and it's not. It's a rookie cookie. I it's like, a rookie it's a cookie. Rookie cookie. We're you not, can always eat two cookies. We're not making. 50 milligram cookies. Yeah, so a five gram cookie yeah. is a great start. Yeah. You can make whatever you want. So in this case, we want 170 milligrams of THC. Because 30, the, the recipe makes 34 cookies. Yep. And we want five per. Mm-hmm. Five times 34 is 170. Yep, exactly. Right. So in this case, that's a tablespoon weighs 14.2 grams. And we need 4.25 tablespoons of the pot butter at 40 milligrams. Yes. So that gives us 170 milligrams. And then the rest... We're gonna put regular butter in. So we have leftover butter, which is kind of nice. Five, Five milligrams. milligrams. And that's half the state serving size recommendation, which I think yeah. should be a normal okay. human's recommendation, unless you are really experienced with edibles. So depending on the potency of the butter that you've made, you have to figure out, do the math, <laughs> be responsible, exactly how much can of butter yeah. versus the regular butter, right? This is our exactly. can of butter. I think you can see it on the TV is my guess. 
Uh, I'm there gonna we grab go. my spatula. So we're gonna throw the butter in here and the sugar. Yeah. I'll let you do it. So first throwing in our 4.25 tablespoons or 60, milligra 60 grams of can of butter at 40 milligrams of THC per tablespoon. And then the rest <laughs> of the, the butter. And the rest of the 283 we're filling out with normal butter. And honestly, I obviously we want to use unsalted butter, good butter. Uh, when you're infusing your cannabis, I really do recommend using a good butter. You're spending some time with this. Definitely don't want salted butter. Kerrygold or that type of thing are really nice. Flugra. Okay, so now we're gonna put our sugar. Don't, don't skimp. You know, uh, so I, I happen uh, to be friends with Christina Tozzi. Yes, you and her. You another, introduced I, I know, me to somehow her. She's I, my somehow idol. I'm friends with like all the greatest bakers. I know. But Christina Tozzi once told me, and she wrote it into her contract, <laughs> Uh, when they did, <laughs> took on investment, mm -hmm. that no matter what, they won't use bad butter. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing you should never skimp on when baking, it's the quality bad of butter. your butter. Yes. Like you can you can skimp maybe elsewhere. Yes, never and you with guys are butter. using amazing butter. It's the same butter we use at Cupcake Royale, which is great. It's yeah. local. It's Don't done skimp right. It's yeah. On your butter. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Butter is. Or your can of butter. Especially when I you're mean, baking. Come on. Yeah. Well, I mean, like here. Okay, so my butter's in. What's next? Throw your sugars in there. Okay. We're going to let that... Um, so we have a, a cup and a half <coughs> of brown sugar. Mm -hmm. or, or 330, 330 grams. grams. Yep. Okay. Brown sugar especially I like to weigh because I never know. Do you pack it? Do you not pack Wait, it? How far do you pack, do you pack it? it? Exactly. No one knows. I know. I don't know. I just weigh it. And then my white sugar. Yep. Which was one cup. Great. Wait, is this, so now is this going... recipe that we're making... Is, this, this, is it a favorite recipe? This is one of my favorite chocolate chip cookie recipes. Yes. In well, fact, that's, that's uh, the name is it just the name is like it's my super yummy, chip cookie recipe. super it's yummy chocolate super chip chocolate cookie chocolates. recipe. That's a great name that you're gonna love. I was told you were great at branding. I think super yummy. <laughs> <laughs> is it your recipe? It's you know what I had a, a chef friend of mine who is gonna work with me on my new business. Whoa. So she Breaking news. is a chef from Thomas Keller and Tartine and Republic, and she built this recipe. Cool. And it's really good. Okay, I'm so All excited. Right. So now the now we're gonna mix the butter, but just butter, butter and sugar. Yep, That's and all we we're need doing. to mix that really well because what we're doing now is it is uh, making sure that butter is the pot butter is distributed homogeneously throughout the entire bowl. So ideally, you have room temp butter. If it's not, you're gonna have to you can you Do can you, is you melted can, butter a bad thing? I, I think it's not not the best. I think you want warm, you know, room temp. Okay, question. And what is the brand of butter that we are using? Oh, what is the brand of butter? We're using Meadowsweet butter. Both of us have uh, Meadowsweet as our dairy. Um, but I recommend a good, I think Dairy Gold is fine. I mean, I really honestly would do like Kerry, Kerry Gold, the Irish butter, or a Plugra, like a super high fat Plugra. butter. We're, we're big Plugra fans in my house. Yes, gotta love that. And, and we're baking, and butter is... You know. Okay, I started on low, but I know. Let's go to yeah. Let's, let's go, to go to medium, medium. now. Um, so we're gonna let this. Our fancy bake. We're gonna let this mix because we want that to be blended throughout. We want the cannabis butter to be blended throughout with the sugar, and all of that's equal. So this is what's really important. Yeah. If you don't mix well, and you can't over mix this step. No. It, it's so important to mix this well because otherwise you could have pockets with lots yeah. of THC and yeah. then pockets with none yeah and if this whole dosing trying to avoid cannabis roulette <laughs> is going to work it means that this step it's has really to be important really for well our mixed. five milligram cookies exactly yeah it's good so we're gonna let that kind of blend together that's got a little ways to go and then from there okay, well, we'll do other ingredients while it's blending you, what do you want to talk you, about uh, now you it was you had a, uh, a, a tantalizing morsel earlier you're starting a new company can we talk about it well it's crazy i mean it's the time of covid and yeah i'm really excited i've been working on this for a while brian okay brian is somebody that i run all my new companies by and he really oh, helps me you mean with... the one before <laughs> <laughs> yes the one before That's which true. Is... And, and we were talking about this one too so okay so yeah, but, but, I... but we're not ready to let the cat out of the bag yet yeah Okay, yes. but it's it's something in the food world. Something in the food world. And it's gonna be awesome. And it's gonna be amazing. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Cool. Okay, how do you feel about 
That is looking great. Okay. Can you guys get a shot of that? I think I think you they can, can kind of see, see how can see it. how I, it's blended yeah, together. Me, it's I one can, uh, solid chunk. I can hold it. Up. Oh gosh. And it doesn't even look like we have to scrape the bowl, but typically you would always scrape the bowl between efforts. But that, since it's so Let's oily see. with the butter, we're good. Yeah. Yeah, really well mixed. Mm -hmm. Can't Perfect. overmix it. You, yeah. And okay. so now, now what are we gonna do? Now, we're gonna add the eggs. Let's just add them one at a time. Put it on kind of, I'd say medium, and let each one kind of blend in and add the other one. And we can add the vanilla that, that too. That feels fast. Isn't that too yeah. fast? Let's go. Let's go down. This very expensive you take mixer. You have to stop low it before and you change the speed. Low and slow is how you do cannabis. That's true. Edibles. Okay. <laughs> okay. You can always go forward. You can never go backwards. It feels Famous. risky to break the shell right into the. Yeah. But. That is risky. You need to know what you're doing, Brian. But you know, have you ever done no, this no, before? Now I'm nervous. I'm gonna do it here. I make eggs. You do eggs. not want to eat. Get salmonella. You know, for I this. probably make eggs four times a week in my house. I bet. Can you crack two in one hand at a time? No. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. The eggs are in. Two large eggs. Yep. So we're gonna just let that kind of mix in. Okay. It's looking good. Now we're gonna add a little vanilla. What and is that? A one, teaspoon and a half. One and a half teaspoons. Yep. And yeah. we're using a good vanilla. I highly recommend a good vanilla. In fact, the vanilla that you use here is the vanilla we use at Cupcake. It's a Bourbon Madagascar pure vanilla extract. You can get this in extract right, or the, paste. If you do paste, you'd use just a little less. It's super concentrated. So that's what we use in our buttercream and our cupcakes too. It's good. It's don't good skip on your vanilla. No, I don't. I don't think you should. We're canless. I mean, this is... We are canless. We're not like putting imitation vanilla extract. Okay, should, should people be preheating their oven to a certain temperature? Is this, sure. Is that, is that a good idea? You know, that's always a good idea. You know? And preheat your oven to 350 degrees for this recipe. Okay. Cool. Okay. Turn your, oh, uh, convection can be on now if you want it. We but can turn that fan back on. You, you don't, don't need it, for, you don't yeah, need it to decarboxylate. <laughs> we should have had a picture of the, the cannabis all over the oven. That was pretty fun. This one takes less mixing. <laughs> yes. So we're, we're, it's good. We're good. Once we add the flour and the dry ingredients, that's when we have that's to be careful we wanna, about over mixing. Yep. So at this point, let's turn this off okay. and let's drop it down and let's just give it a little scrape. Now you were telling me earlier. Here, let's use this big guy. Yeah. Um, why is scraping the paddle important? It's just good to just get, you know, baking again is the science. You don't want all the baking powder on this side and the salt over here. You want it to blend well. So you always scrape the bottom of the bowl, uh, especially now. And then af after we add about half the flour, we'll scrape it one more time. So I'm, I'm going through and I'm scraping the sides. Chunk, 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 yep. chunk, 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 chunk. All the way down and making sure there's no dry ingredients. This is a great mixer. It, the the, the uh, paddle hits the bottom of the bowl and it, it mixes it well. So, but, so what's next? All right, so now we're gonna add the dry ingredients, which are, we put all the, uh, yeah, we got a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of baking so uh, powder, and how much salt? What does that say? Two and a quarter teaspoons. Whoa, that's a lot of salt. Yeah, but I love salt. I know, so let's throw that in there. I can throw all three at the same time. Mm-hmm. Great. And then we are gonna add the flour I, about a third. Add about a right third now. of the flour right now. And we're now. just gonna do that and we're just gonna get it to blend and just add a third, a third, a third. And really we're gonna mix it for not long. Probably in, just until it incorporates. Okay. So this One, is the 1, part 000. you don't wanna over, over mix because the glutens in the flour will become tough and you- Is it time? Yep. Okay. So we'll stop. So if you over mix, that you're saying the gluten in the flour gets like... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what you happens get, to the cookie? You get just a tougher cookie, okay. cake for sure. You really don't, you get cornmeal -y style cake. Um, cake is more okay, good. delicate. Good. Okay. Oh, am I supposed to scrape at this point? You know what, let's do this one and then we'll scrape at the end of this. The whole thing? Yeah. Just add that in like three parts. That's, so I, we added I the. I like I did a quarter, a quarter, a half, but. Oh, okay. We'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. Oh God, it's we really messed this small up. Small cloud of flour. <laughs> Just like we were gonna actually do a little promo video for this, and we were gonna get out of the canless truck, 
and open the van door and just have like a dust cloud of cookie dust from we, our cannabis cookies, like Jeff Spicoli getting out of Fast Times. But we didn't, you didn't want to do that. I like we're going to hot box <laughs> Are we the gonna camel strap. Hot box cookies in the camel we, strap. We, we're getting a lot of questions about tincture. Is there an easy way if we're, if we're not doing not butter? Straight. Yeah, so yes. when, when would we math. have added the tincture? So, good question. So, what the tincture that I bought is a tincture that all tinctures, because they're edibles, come in, well, mostly 100 milligrams of THC is what I shop for. A lot of tinctures now come in high amounts of CBD, et cetera. You can also buy those. You're going to get a different effect. But I, I went for something that had 100 milligrams of THC. So I know exactly how much this is. And 15 milliliters, this is how big this particular tincture is, is about a tablespoon. So out of the butter that I have, a tablespoon is 14.2 grams. I'm gonna sub that, I'm gonna take a tablespoon out of my butter. So we had 283 grams. I'm gonna do about 280, so you're gonna be, 79 grams so and put this in instead and be, just add this during the butter part. Because butter is an oil and that's an right. oil and you don't wanna have too much oil. Right, and so you have, if you wanna do 170 milligrams, then you're going to have to- uh, Take out more butter. Yeah, or put 200, you know, you, you, it's harder to, it's not harder to measure it, but you need kind of but precise. When, when in this process would you have added that in? In the butter phase. In the butter phase. Yeah, so I put in normal butter. What if? I take out, this is 50 milliliters or one tablespoon. Some of it comes in 30 milliliters, which is a typical tincture size. Okay. That is two tablespoons. So I just swap it at that point. What happens if someone following along at home didn't add their tincture yet? Is it okay to just put it in right now? I would try to put it in before the flour, but because you really want to emulsify it throughout, but of course it you just put means it you might have to it's mix just, it a little more. Yeah, and, and, it might have a might, and it's a cookie. It's cookie. not. It's not like a cake or something. You know, where it's you're gonna feel that cookies are like here and cakes. They, are they like, have a higher tolerance for making a little mistake. For amateurs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so what, what I did is I used the spatula. Yeah, and just scrape the bottom. And look, I found like little pockets of flour that was unmixed. Oh my gosh, good for you. Well, so that's well, why good, you do this. because you know what we're um, doing now. Is the all important ingredient with the chocolate chips. Yeah. Well, so because there's, I see little bits of white flour, do I need to mix it one more time or is it okay? When we mix the chocolate chips, it'll just mix it'll, right it'll in. It'll happen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna put in. And, and now this is two a, different types of chips. Yeah, in this recipe, we're doing mm -hmm. a cup of milk chocolate. And a, is it a cup and a half? It, uh, we, we have it weighed out, but also. Dark chocolate is one and a third. One and a and third. And milk chocolate is one cup. Exactly. So throw those in there. But that's like that's like kind of a bold move. You're using two different types of chocolate. I think it's nice to use some super dark chocolate in there too because it's but the sweetness. Too much dark chocolate is just too much. Well, we have a lot of brown sugar and sugar in there. Throw them all in. Yeah, throw them all in there. And so this step, we're gonna let it mix to homogenize the chocolate chips. So just like other types of homogenization. You don't want one cookie with all the chocolate chips and another with very few, or if you do, just know that the one with few chocolate chips is gonna have more THC. Well, you're saying that because when we make the cookies, we're, gonna, we're gonna weigh them. Yes. And because it's all about the weight of each cookie. So mm -hmm. getting the chocolate chips mixed in is important because you wanna have the same amount of chips and batter in every cookie. Yep. Ideally, I mean, we're, we're Ideally. trying to do a, a recipe where we're gonna have consistent, you know, some people might have a half a cookie. Yeah. But, uh oh, Brian. What's wrong, did I, you break it? I broke it. <laughs> anyway, that'll come off. <laughs> I just have a bakery, I don't even Can know. Can I bake on my way. one with writing on it? Probably, right? Uh, that yeah, idea? I'll get you a different tray liner. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. Really dumb idea. It's just, you know, uh, I know, it's just, can you eat All the right. dough? I just ate the dough. Oh, wow. I, I'm okay. a big cookie dough guy. <laughs> it, this is hard, right? This is the challenge, but I think you should eat some cookie dough. Gosh, it's so good. Uh, is it good? Yeah. I could just okay. make an ice cream with that. That'd I be kind of good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so to get to our five milligrams, we just yeah. divided the total weight of all the grams divided by 34 cookies. Right. And it's about 53 milligrams of, or 53 grams. Yeah. You have so, your scale. Yeah, in, in this recipe, again, uh, it's 34 cookies. 
Right. And we, we added up all the weights of our ingredients. Mm-hmm. We divide it by 34. So right. again, we know exactly yes. how much THC is in each cookie. Clearly, we are not stoned doing this no, episode. We're not. So <laughs> we in, are so... Um, in that case, <laughs> right. we did it before. Oh, you yes. have a little piece of tinfoil? Yeah, absolutely. And there's a scale. Um, you and want really, to measure each cookie. If, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. You can just kind of have your cookies be about the same size and divide. If you make, if it yields, you know, 30 cookies or 50 cookies, just take that 170 milligrams divided by, in our case, it's 34 cookies, which gives you 5 milligrams. So if you wanted to make a bunch of little cookies, it might be 2.5 milligrams per cookie or something. These are nice size cookies. I have a grumpy scale. There we go. Oh, that's 75. That's huge. <laughs> oh, 50. You know what? Here, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to have you. Do you want me to? Yeah, because then I can weigh them. Oh, okay. Yes. And, and I'll you be can, your. And you can make them nice. And of course, I wash my hands before this, although these are baking. Yeah, we are going to bake. Um, I like to like flatten them out a little bit, and then we're going to put a little bit of finishing salt. 50 grams per cookie is it okay to eat the cookie dough i mean is it bad to eat raw eggs? i, I mean, just i'm such a cookie dough guy i think you got to be careful with raw eggs you know the restaurants they have to put that on there but a lot of people uh, eat raw the, eggs as a restaurant you have to put all kinds of warnings I know. around that i don't you know. rare this and that i love cookie dough you know one thing i like to do this is 34 cookies now maybe i'm going to a party and i want to eat it. all these cookies my preference is to have fresh out of the oven cookies. So what I like to do is just bake off. I make all the pucks. These are the pucks, right? I'm, I, I measure all the pucks. I put them in a little Tupperware and throw them in the freezer. And then I'll bake five at a time. I have three friends coming over. It's the election. I need two a night. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I need four all cookies. These, all these occasions. Have you voted yet? Yes, I'm so excited. I saw your sticker. I voted. I voted gotta, today. I got to vote. Guys, it's one week away. How are we feeling? How are we feeling out feeling there? Feeling great. A lot of hope. A lot of hope. A lot, we, I mean, what, if we got to choose one, let's just choose hope. Choose hope. <laughs> I'm we're, moving in that direction. We're, we're hoping for hope. Hopeful. Yeah. Yeah. We're hopeful for hope. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to do all this batter because it's a ton. Yes. Um, so let's put one more on here and we'll throw this in okay. the oven. Sorry, that one was too big. So here's the deal with baking this. Every oven is often different at home. Uh, we say that you bake it 16 to 18 minutes, and that was using our commercial bakery at Cupcake, Ooh, which is completely calibrated. Just throw it. Um, we baked them here, and it cooked a lot faster. And I, I tend to like to bake them. I would throw them in for about 13 minutes or so, depending, uh, and, and see what they're like. I like them to be slightly gooey before they brown too much, because I like a, a softer, gooier, but cook them a little longer if you like a crunchy cookie. Okay. So we're gonna put some finishing salt on that. Oh, we are. So finishing salt. So just a little bit, because we and, did add a bit of salt. And what is your, this is so beautiful. Um, Isn't that nice? That's Jacobson's sea salt. What, do you, love, what do you love about Jacobson? They're just kind of fun. They were early to the sea salt game. Uh, they're, they're, uh, it's they, it's they, on the Oregon coast, Yeah, right? they take, certain water and dehydrate it and make it's really beautiful. awesome salt. And um, don't skimp on your salt. Yeah. Too much salt. Is, that's a lot of salt, Brian, but it's cool. Whatever. Too much salt? <laughs> it's a little salt. It's a little salty. You know, it's a big cookie. Let's throw those in the oven and see what they okay. look like when so we're we, done. We made these earlier today. Yes, we did. And Turned we have out. some. Mm-hmm. Yay. I'll be back with the All magic. Right. The magic Sounds of tea. Jody, do you have a favorite chocolate chip you use, and do you have a favorite cookie scooper that you use? You know, I love, we use scoopers. Did Brian use a scooper? These are awesome. You can get them at restaurant supply stores. Okay. Um, and or this, restaurant is, store, this is the green the one. one. Yeah. They, they, they actually are measured. So we have different ones. We scoop our cupcakes in with these scoops, too. Okay. These are great. Okay. It's pretty easy. You can also just use a tablespoon, and you'll get a feeling for you what your dose get, is. Yeah. You don't have to measure every one if you don't want to. What about a chocolate chip? Do you have a go-to? I, I love Velrona even... chocolate, or I love to put Theo in. And honestly, I typically would just... You take good chocolate and chop it up, maybe, chop it if up. you want it. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, and if you are a baker and have access, like, the little uh, melting chips sometimes are really fun mm. that uh, kitchens get that you might melt for your chocolate buttercream or whatever. But those are fun in chocolate chip cookies, too. And they kind of almost create this sandwich of chocolate, cool. like a croissant has a layer of chocolate okay. in between the... 
it's kind of cool. So, all right. I mean, okay. I, I so play with you. It. When we did our test earlier, you think we left them in an extra minute or two? Yeah, I do. These are a but little overdone. The, the, they're perfect, but I like a little chewier. You like a gooier? Are we gonna have one? We're gonna have cookie we, toast. You guys, this is so exciting. Um, Yum. Are they gonna taste like? I don't know. Let's the, see. The cookie dough doesn't taste like pot. This 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 particular batch isn't. There's not a lot of cannabis in that butter. I've done batches where I've taken an ounce, which is 28 grams, and put it into. I did two pounds of butter, but it was so so strong. Is and it like for Coachella or <laughs> just to have. <laughs> Uh, a more concentrated version. You're making pot butter. It takes the same amount of time. Put it in the freezer. It doesn't taste. It like, tastes like a delicious cookie. Mm-hmm. It doesn't taste like I'm eating. It's anything. a really good cookie, isn't it? It's a really good cookie. Hey, well, you guys are snacking and having cookies getting high. Can I ask you a couple of quick sort of rapid fire questions here? Yeah. We've got a few things going on. One, pot butter. Super fun to have that in the refrigerator. What else can you do with it? Can we can, can we put this in, in anything? Can we can we make a cupcake with it? Mm-hmm. Like, is that part of the new business plan at all? Popcorn? You know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Now that popcorn? you have the butter. Yes, what can we do with the butter? All right, so like if you wanted to make popcorn tonight, you can use the same kind of rationale. So you're, a tablespoon is 40 milligrams. If it's just you. That's too much pot. You and your, your spouse, partner, whoever, uh, or friend, that's a lot. But so I, I, could, might, I could cut the butter with other butter. Right. So I might use, in that case, for me, maybe I'd have five. We'd each have five, so I'd do ten. So I'd do a teaspoon. Yeah. There's three teaspoons and a tablespoon. Right. And so i do about a teaspoon or maybe less and put regular butter in there. Put it on my buttered popcorn. Yummy. And, and like, what about buttercream frosting? Or what we about have done that. Of, we, yeah. <laughs> we've okay. made so I Can't thing. Believe It's Pot Buttercream. It's really good. <laughs> that's um, amazing. And so we just add same thing. You just kind of figure out the the um, ratio, in fact, Cupcake even did on 420, we reopened after the pandemic. We closed for a month, reopened on the 18th of April, and on 420 we sold CBD buttercream and got, we got our hands slapped by all the departments of this and that. And Was it like, worth it? Come on, you guys, it's kind of fun. It's, it's 420. Now, can, yeah. <laughs> can I make it? And CBD, you do not get stoned, right. of course, right? Like, that's not. Any recipe that calls for butter, can yeah. I use? Can I use can of butter in it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, think about like crab. You're having a lovely crab like meal. Like Dungeness crab? Yeah, wouldn't that be good? Uh, kind of yes. lovely. Okay, Just kind of instead general of question wine, on this one, like so... have bubbly water and you'll be hydrated and you'll feel great the next day. You'll have great conversations. There you go. There you go. Sarah is wondering. Mm -hmm. She heard that you could use the weed that you'd smoked. Like they, they used to call it the cash. Is that... Is that right? Is that it seems wrong to her, but just wondering if you could clarify on sort of the use. You mean I'm, after you smoke it? I, this is, uh, yep, seems wrong to me also, but I just gotta ask, is there any way to reuse? You mean like pull it out of the pipe? Weed and, in some sense, or? I've heard that if you use like a volcano or kind of a, a different way to heat, like a, what do you call that? There's a way that heats cannabis that. Uh, it doesn't wreck it. It doesn't wreck it. It's like, what is, vaporizes it. Okay. Um, I've heard that you can get some more of the THC out of that. I'm not an expert on so that. Stay I'm, tuned for baking yeah. with cannabis 201 when we go into sort okay. of okay. free cycling oh. once you When cannabis. we get into our, our waxes questions? and shatters. Uh, one question about RSO. Uh, going back to kind of earlier when we were talking mm -hmm. about uh, walking through the numbers and that kind of thing, can you guide us at all with, with sort of mm -hmm. RSO? So numbers? you can buy RSO. RSO is already decarboxylated. Okay. And that's a great oil. Is this a different type of oil? Mm -hmm. Is there it's a got, different effect? It's or? like Rick Simpson oil. It's a certain extraction that apparently has a different a means better, to the same end. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can extract cannabis into an oil. You can decarboxylate it. it. There's, you can make waxes and shatters and rosins and. But at the all end of the day, things. it's just about how many grams are in it, and right. just counting up and doing your recipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're going to use a concentrate like a a wax or shatter or all these things that the, pe the kids like, um, you need to decarboxylate many of those. You can ask your bud tender at your local store. So there's a, your you bud probably would, tender? that's what they're called. That's Don't so you funny. know that? No. <laughs> what? I'm not, uh, this is my, so this good. is my first, uh, pot cookie? My first THC of 2020. Mm. 
Which is saying a lot because it's been a hard that, year. That is, that is saying a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I know. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other right. questions? Because we can say, no, we, oh, you know what I wanted to show? At Cupcake Royale right now. I don't know if you right. can see these. The coolest ever vote and Ruth Bader Ginsburg mm-hmm. cupcakes. And can I like have these sent to a friend to encourage them to vote? Can totally. I? Totally. So we launched this cupcake right after RBG died. We uh, just, you know, we have a long history of standing up for whether it's marriage equality, women's right to choose, um, those types of things. So we created this four pack and we're giving 10% to Planned Parenthood. Awesome. To, of, to, of revenue? Of, the of revenue price. from that four pack. And we're awesome. selling those through the election. and. It, it's going great. And then we have little stickers and we've always done things around uh, getting involved in voting. We just think it's important to be part of this country, this city, this state, whatever awesome. that we live in and awesome. be involved. Yeah. So okay. Cool. All right. Uh, everyone, thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Jody Hall, for just... Did we nail like, it on time and yeah. everything? It's for crazy. just being wonderful awesome. and knowledgeable and one of my favorite people. Ryan, I love you Thank you so for much. being such a wonderful activist in our community. And I know you do so much more than even you said tonight. So thank you for that. And uh, for those students watching, we have aerobics tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. with Pacific Northwest Ballet and my wife. <laughs> wow. Uh, and others on our team. It's so much fun. Is it 80s aerobics oh, style yes, fashion? There's like, oh, sorry, oh, yeah. Good. Like eyeliner, eyeshadow, and Olivia high ponies. Olivia Newton-John kind it's of very physical. Good. Uh, got, what do you call it? Leg warmers? Right? Uh, we have leg warmers <laughs> totally. for sale in the campus store. And then I love it. Uh, tomorrow night, we're doing a canning and pickling class. Oh, so I think fun. that's with Mark's wife, Anne Marie. That is true. And one of yes. our two chefs. And then I'll be interviewing the executive director of the Northwest African American Museum, nice. talking about Seattle black history. I love it. It's that's, a big day of school tomorrow. That's a big day of school. Oh, gosh, this remote learning is yeah. awesome. I right. love it. But for all you watching at home, thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, please eat responsibly and <laughs> have a great responsibly. night. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. Super fun.